How's it going YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite aviation channel and today we are doing the July 2024 update for Chicago O'Hare Terminal 5. This video is coming out a week late for good reason. I was busy finishing up my internship that I've been doing the past almost two months. Still kind of stressing out over it for a couple of reasons that we don't need to get into but another reason why this video was delayed uh, for good reason is because we finally have two airlines that I've been missing from this diorama for a very very long time. Today they are making their debut as you can see right in front of you so I wasn't really sure if I was going to be able to get them in because uh, the releases were so delayed um, but finally these came in I think yesterday or the day before from the time I'm filming this video and I was able to get them in um, despite pushing the update back a week late um, but yeah we'll get to those when we get to those the updates based at 5 p.m. Uh, during the towards the beginning of the evening international rush so without any further ado let's go ahead and get started all right so we're gonna get started over here at gate m4 with this uh, delta 717 200 pushing back with service out to detroit it's flight 2358 and it came in from detroit with that same flight number use a delta connection Embraer 175 which has just come in from new york jfk's flight 5783 and we headed back out to jfk as uh, flight 5788 here at gate M9, we've got the Delta A220-100, came in from Minneapolis-St. Paul as flight 1471, making service out to New York LaGuardia as flight 2726. And over here at gate M11 is the Delta 757-200, just came in from Atlanta as flight 2738, and we headed back out to Atlanta or Citrus Aviation's airport with that same flight number. Over here taxiing out to runway 27 center for departure is the Cathay Pacific Airbus A350-1000, Heading back to Hong Kong's flight 801. I think I covered this in a previous update, but Cathay Pacific recently changed the flight numbers, uh, or the flight number for the outbound flight. Uh, for some reason, the inbound flight Hong Kong to Chicago is still flight 806, but um, for whatever reason, the outbound flight Hong, uh, Chicago back to Hong Kong, um, the flight number changed from 807 to 801. So, not too sure why they, why they did that, but that's a move they made about a month or so ago. Here at gate M15, we've got the British Airways Boeing 787-10 just docked into the jetway after arriving from London Heathrow as flight 299. Next at M16, we've got the first new model of the update. Finally, I've been able to add the Swiss 777-300ER. I've been saying this probably for the past year or so that they've been flying these every summer on the uh, regular year-round Swiss flight. Um, so flight 8 and 9 gets upgaged to a 777-300ER for the summer season and then for the rest of the year it goes back to the A330. Uh, but they've been doing this for a number of years now, even pre-pandemic and uh, finally as of a, about a month or so ago I was able to add this aircraft. Huge shout out to RM Model Store for uh, getting me a good deal on this one. But here we have the uh, Swiss 777-300ER. Uh, just recently came in from Zurich as flight 8 and we headed back out to Zurich in about two hours time as flight number 9. And then taxiing out for departure here is the KLM Boeing 777-300ER, also headed out to runway 27 center for departure following the uh, Cathay A350-1000, and this aircraft is headed back to Amsterdam as flight 612. Here at gate M18 we've got the Air France Airbus A350-900 getting ready to commence pushback for its return flight to Paris Charles de Gaulle as flight 137. And just taxiing around waiting for a gate to open up is this American Airlines Boeing 787-9, just landed from London Heathrow as flight 91. Uh, there's plenty of open gates now that we've got some aircraft departing, so it should be able to take one of those open gates. And then same case for this United 767-300ER. This is also coming in from London Heathrow as flight 928. It was also taxiing around for a little bit, waiting for a gate to open up. Um, but like I said, now that KLM's departed, Cathay Pacific's departed, Air France has departed, there's a bunch of open gates now for them to get assigned to, so now that's where they're headed. Just arrived into gate M20 is this Finnair Airbus A330-300, uh, just landed from Helsinki as flight number 9. Headed back out to Helsinki in about 4 or 5 hours time, maybe less than that, as uh, flight number 10. Here at M21 we've got the Aeromexico 737 MAX 8, this aircraft came in from Mexico City as flight 686. We headed back out to Mexico City in about 2 hours time as flight 687. Here's the TAP Portugal A330-900neo at M24, came in about an hour ago from Lisbon as flight 243, and it's still got about an hour or so to go until its departure back to Lisbon as flight 244. Here at M25, we've got the Royal Jordanian Boeing 787-8, just getting serviced ahead of its departure back out to Amman as flight 264. 
All right, and pushing back from M27, we have the debut of Austrian Airlines in the airport updates. Austrian's been flying to Chicago for many, many years now, and uh, I've just not been able to get one of their models because, uh, at least for the 777, the models have been pretty hard to find until as of about a month or so ago when Phoenix released this aircraft, one of the uh, 777-200ERs in the new livery which uh, unfortunately ended up being pretty bad timing considering Austrian recently just started flying the 787 to Chicago as of, I believe, late June. So now they're flying the 787-9 to both Chicago and JFK. But I believe I checked their schedule and it appears that later in the year they're going to switch back to the 777 around October, November time. That's I'm not too sure if that's confirmed. It says that on their website, but it could be subject to change. Um, so we will have to add the 787 sometime soon. But until then, really, really glad to finally have Austrian in these airport updates. And right here is the 777-200ER pushing back for its return flight to Vienna as flight number 66. And more on the topic of new airlines, here next door at gate M29 is the Air Serbia A330-200. Just landed from Belgrade as flight 506. We'll be headed back out to Belgrade in about two or three hours as flight 507. So Air Serbia began service to Chicago last year, I believe May 2023. And they've been flying three times a week uh, from Belgrade. And uh, their timings are actually, they actually vary based on the day. So one, so each flight during the week has a different arrival and departure time. So they have one flight that arrives, uh, one day of the week, the flight's gonna come in at like 11.30 or something a.m. depart around 1 p.m. and then another day of the week the flight comes in at like 4 or 5 p.m. departs at like 7 p.m. and then another day of the week it comes in at like 8 p.m. or something that leaves at like 11 11 30 p.m. so uh, this I believe is the Monday this this airport update is based off the Monday schedule so this aircraft came in at like 4 30 5 p.m. and is now going to depart back to Belgrade around 7 30 I believe so Air Serbia um, the reason why they fly to Chicago anyway is because uh, Chicago has one of the biggest uh, Serbian populations or diasporas outside of Serbia, obviously. One of the biggest Serbian diasporas in the U.S. Uh, one of my close friends has a lot of family in Serbia. He's actually in Serbia right now. Um, and historically, they've always had to use, you know, Lufthansa or Swiss to get to Serbia or maybe even Austrian or Turkish. But um, now with Air Serbia flying straight from Chicago to Belgrade, they can use this option now. Although I think he didn't fly Air Serbia most recently when he went there. I think he was on Swiss or something like that. But still, Air Serbia has been doing really well on this route. And a big, big thank you finally to Phoenix Models. They released this model last month. Not just this aircraft, but also its sister ship, which is uh, YUARC. This one right here is ARB, if you can see the registration on the tail. It's got Nikola Tesla as the uh, icon there. Uh, pretty perfect considering um, Belgrade's airport is named after Nikola Tesla. Um, that's kind of why I ended up getting this one instead of the other one, which has uh, Mihailo Pupin on the tail, which is who was another, I think, Serbian physicist or an inventor, something like that. Same thing with uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, so yeah, pretty cool to finally have Air Serbia. And now that we have Air Serbia and Austrian, we have every single airline that flies to Terminal 5 except for Viva Aerobus which is that low-cost airline from Mexico. So those models are really, really hard to find, but hopefully I can find one soon or somebody releases a new one soon. Um, but yeah, it's pretty awesome. Really thankful that we, we've gotten to this point. I've been doing these updates for almost two years, and we're almost there having each of the many different airlines that fly into Terminal 5. I didn't count exactly how many there are, but I'll put the number on the screen right now so you can see. Um, it's been a while, taken a while to get up to this point, but again, super thankful to finally be here. All right, moving on to gate M30, we have the fourth and final new model of the update. It's this uh, Qatar Airways Boeing 777-300ER with the 25 years of excellence sticker. This aircraft's getting serviced ahead of its departure back to Doha's flight 726. Got this model about a month or two ago from the NG Models exchange mall that they do every couple months. Uh, took about two months to get here. I think they did this back in like March or February. I didn't, I didn't get this model physically until like May or late May because it came straight from the warehouse in China, I, I believe. Uh, well, first they sent it to the retailer that I chose and then from that specific retailer it came here. So it took about two, a uh, month and a half, two months, pretty long time. But it was a pretty obvious pickup for me. It was the only model in the entire batch that was somewhat appealing. I've seen this aircraft about two or three times, uh, twice in Chicago for sure. I can't remember if I've seen it anywhere else, but definitely seen it in Chicago at least twice. So thought it'd be cool to pick that one up. 
All right, at gate M32, we've got the WestJet Boeing 737-700 here from Calgary. It's flight 1587, I believe. No, sorry, 1588. And it's going to head back out to Calgary in about an hour as flight 1589. I keep forgetting WestJet flies here still. I believe they're seasonal during the summer only, um, but they fly daily to Chicago during the summer season. Um, they compete directly, of course, with American and United. Uh, they fly a mix of everything, 737, 700, 800, and the MAX 8. We've been getting the 800 more recently, or more often, I should say, at O'Hare this year. Um, but I don't have the 800, I've got the 700, which still makes a decent amount of visits into Chicago still. Um, but there we go, WestJet back out to Calgary. At gate M33, we've got the Frontier A321neo with Chopper the Great White Shark on the tail, pushing back with service out to Denver as flight 3173, and came in earlier from Cancun as flight 45. I saw this exact same plane in Philadelphia last month when I was departing on a Frontier Neo back to Chicago. That video will be coming out probably next week, hopefully if all goes well, but I ended up seeing this plane taxi by um, in Philadelphia as we were preparing for departure, so pretty cool. Here at gate M34, we've got the Emirates Boeing 777-300ER getting heavily serviced ahead of its departure back to Dubai as flight 236. Here at gate M35, we've got the Frontier A320neo with Baha the Whale Shark on the tail. Sarah making service out to Phoenix as flight 1827 and came in from Atlanta as flight 1595. Here at M36, we've got the Southwest Boeing 737-700. This aircraft came in from Nashville as flight 4167. It's going to head back out to Nashville in a couple minutes as flight 2098. And then pushing back from M37 is a Southwest Boeing 737 MAX 8. And this aircraft's making service out to Baltimore's Flight 648. Came in from Las Vegas as Flight 1821. Here at M40 is an aircraft that you definitely don't see at Terminal 5 very often. Maybe like twice or three times a day, maybe a little bit more. Um, but it's the United Express Amber 175. And this aircraft has come in from Quebec City in Canada as uh, flight 3659. So even though it is coming in from Canada, uh, Quebec City does not have a pre-clearance facility in their airport. It's a much smaller international airport compared to, you know, Ottawa, Toronto, Vancouver, etc., etc. So um, it's, I think, the only Canadian city served from either, I don't even know, maybe, I think it's the only Canadian city served from Chicago that does not have pre-clearance upon departure so the plane still has to pull into the international terminal and passengers still have to go through customs as they would coming in from a, a non-pre-cleared country like Qatar or Austria or Germany, for example. So that's why that's here. But you also see, see these things coming in from Monterey in Mexico and maybe somewhere else. I can't really remember, but that's coming in from Quebec City. And last aircraft of the update just pushed out of gate M39 here is the Lot Polish Airlines Boeing 787-9. Just getting ready to commence its taxi to the runway for departure out to Warsaw as flight 2. And it arrived from Krakow as flight number 9. Alright, so that is a wrap for the July 2024 Terminal 5 update. Hope you all enjoyed it. I'm planning at some point to do an update with every single airline that I have for T5 now. Like I said, I have all of them, thankfully, now, except for one. So possibly by next month's update, I might do that, or I might just wait till December for the two-year anniversary to do that update. Maybe by that maybe the, maybe by that point, I'll have um, Viva Aerobus as well. That'd be pretty cool if we got to that point. But let me know when you want to see that, if at all. Um, otherwise, next month, August, will be a different sort of time period like I've always been doing. Um, some plans, I don't know if you've been noticing throughout the update, but I might have also noticed or mentioned this last month's update. A lot of the foils are starting to warp. And uh, like I said in the previous update, I think it was, I believe it's because of just the difference in air pressure at various points during the year. Um, it tends to mess up all this paper and, you know, it tends to come out a little bit, starts warping. As you can see at various points, um, especially with that 717 back there, it's pretty disgusting. Um, so it pains me to say this. It's really, really annoying that this is happening, but I'm probably going to have to virtually redo, well, not re well, probably redo everything, honestly. I'm having to not use glue this time, but probably like double-sided tape to keep everything down because like this glue is clearly not holding up in the papers just keep getting warped and stuff it's you can see everything it's disgusting honestly nothing like 
hazardous, but it's just super annoying looking at all this. Um, so that's what I get for using super glue, or not super glue, uh, glue sticks. Um, so yeah, it's like I said, it's super annoying, but I'm gonna have to, you know, probably use double-sided tape or something to make it. Uh, if I use regular tape, you're gonna see the tape obviously on the surface, which is not ideal for a, a nice clean look that you would definitely get with the glue. Like I use, you can see, you can't really see much residue and stuff like that, but yeah, I think that's just what we're gonna have to do at this point, use double-sided tape, or if you have any other suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, we just gotta fix all that. Like you can see, it's all sticking up, and like right here, it's just, it's not, not great. So, figure it out, hopefully, maybe by the next update I'll fix it, because um, I now have about three or so weeks until semester or school starts back up again which is crazy to think about but we'll see what we can do but anyways thank you very much for watching till the end of the video uh definitely expect some more videos to come out throughout the rest of the summer we'll see what happens i just got to lock in for school coming up this uh this august late the end of august when school opens up again my senior year of university of undergrad uh, we just gotta you know lock in get ready for the real world and stuff like that um, but that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Take care and goodbye.